In this video, we're going to work on the EQ on the vocals. Now, fortunately, or unfortunately for the purposes of these videos, there's not that much to do. They sound pretty good on their own. We're going to do a bit of gentle sweetening, but there's not a lot of corrective EQ that's necessary or even creative EQ that's necessary. It's a pretty straight ahead kind of pop rock vocal. Now, a couple of little mix notes just to bring you up to date before we get started. On the drum bus, I changed the compressor. Instead of Logic's built-in compressor, I'm using the IK Multimedia Vintage Compressor Model 670. It's not a huge difference, just a little bit of a different color. I like the sound of running it through there. And on the organ, I'm using an Omnisphere organ patch. I just have a pretty straight ahead 100 hertz high pass filter. I'm using one of the built-in plugins in Omnisphere with a gentle slope just to roll off some of the extreme lows. And the bass, I haven't really done anything to. I like it straight out of the box. I'm going to leave it as is. So let's look at the vocals. Now I'm going to solo the vocal bus and we'll work with that for now. I've got a nice little chain happening here. I recorded with a fair bit of compression from my outboard FMR RNC compressor, but I wanted to add a bit more. I'm a big fan of using several stages of light compression rather than fewer stages of heavy compression. It's a bit more transparent sounding. I'm running all the vocals. Now, another thing about these vocals, we have a lot of different harmonies and doubling and things, but they're all pretty much straight ahead in terms of what they need processing wise. First of all, it's the same singer recording it all. And one strategy when you're in this scenario is to often EQ the different parts that are being sung differently so that they'll sound different. But in this case, it's a pretty homogenous kind of vocal, and I'm not really too concerned with doing that. So I'm going to do some of the processing on the vocal bus that'll apply to everything arriving there. And then I'll also do a little bit on some of the individual channels. So on the bus, I have the IK Multimedia White 2A compressor, and I'm running it through there gently. I like the sound of it running through here, so just a couple of dB of compression and output. And then I'm running it through the RC tube from Slate, and then finally through a brick wall limiter from IK Multimedia. Again, just a couple of dB. It's just triggering one or two dB, and I'm just limiting the output just to run it through there and just trim that dynamic range that tiny little bit more so that the vocals sit on top nicely. So let's listen to what we have now, and I'm going to start by EQing the bus. Now, in general, and I've set this up so that my processing is after the EQ, so I'm having the EQ first. And as we tweak the EQ, we're going to hear it through this signal chain. That's a good way of doing it if you're going to be using a bunch of processing after the EQ. But in general, there's a couple of generic general starting points for EQing female vocals, and these certainly do apply in this case. You generally need to or want to roll off a fair bit of the low end. There's not a lot of harmonics in the female vocal range down low. And generally for this type of vocal, we want to add a bit of what we call air on top. And that's a nice little high shelf boost way up high at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12K, somewhere around there, a few dB, just to give it a bit of presence up high. So let's start just by doing that. Oh yeah, something's coming over me. Let it bring your light my way. Oh yeah, I can see it clearly now. Come on, bring your love my way. I'm running too fast, and what does it bring? Confusion is king. I need some reflection of place in my heart. So just, as I say in general, for all the vocals, gentle sweetening. We're rolling off the low end, a few dB of high end air. It sounds really good as it is with all the processing after. So let's look at the individual vocals now, particularly the lead vocal. That's obviously going to be the one I'm most concerned with since that's the most prominent one. Let's look at what we can do here EQ-wise. And this is pretty much the only plugin I have on this channel right now. Oh yeah, something's coming over me. Let it bring your light my way. Oh yeah, I can see it clearly now. Come on, bring your love my way. I'm running too fast. There's a kind of muffly quality there. Let's bring that down a bit. Oh yeah. Something's coming over me. Let See, not too much, otherwise you're really cutting off some of the warmth. Oh yeah, something's coming over me. Let it bring your light my way. Sounds kind of nasal without that warmth there. So I'm just going to do a couple of dB. I don't really need to do it that much. I'm just really gently sculpting it. Oh yeah, something's coming over me. Let it bring your light my And now let's check the harmonics. If I'm cutting at 300, let's check 600 and 1200. Oh yeah, something's coming over me. Let it bring your light my way. Oh yeah, I can see it 
it clearly now. Come on, break. There's a bit of whistling there. I don't want to cut too much because we do need the high end. It starts getting into the upper mids there. Oh, yeah. Something's coming over me. Let it. And let's do a nice little subtle shelf up high just to tweak the lead a bit more in the upper mid so that it sits on top of the others a bit more nicely. Oh, yeah. Something's coming over me. Let it bring your light my way. Oh, yeah, I can see it clearly now. Come on, bring your love my way. I'm running too fast, and what does it bring? Confusion is king. I need some reflection. So, very gentle what I'm doing here. Just subtle little sweetening. It just makes it a bit more sort of taking out the woofiness without losing the warmth and just a touch of presence in the upper mids. Oh, yeah, something's coming over me. Let it bring your light my way. So that's working nicely. Now, as far as the rest of the vocals, I think I'm pretty much happy to have them run through the vocal bus EQ, and they don't really need much more. I have the levels set nicely so that they're all blending. But what I do want to affect are these vocal rhythms that happen during the verse. Let's solo the verse. And I want to have those have a little bit of a different color. Let's let's listen to what all this sounds like in context first of all. I'm running too fast and what does it bring? Confusion is king. I need some reflection, a place in my heart. They sound pretty nice. Everything's nicely balanced. I don't have any automation happening, just gentle level setting, some compression and limiting. But let's look at these vocal rhythms. This is what I wanna tweak a little bit. You know what, I'm just going to copy that EQ across all three. It might be too much, it might be a bit strident with the upper boost, but let's hear it. And I'll start by just soloing the vocal bus. I'm running too fast, and what does it do? That da, do, da, I want to really hear the articulations of the T and the D. Ta, tu, ta, I want to really hear that, that, not sibilance, but that presence. I'm running too fast, and what does it bring? Confusion is king, I need some reflection, a place in my heart. I feel it getting closer. So I have the doubling and tripling of the vocals here very quietly in the background. I don't want it to sound like that big, obvious doubled or tripled vocal. It's sort of cliche of home studios when you have one singer and you get them to layer it several times. I want it really subtly just to thicken it a bit. And then we have a couple of harmonies here. It would have been nice to have some different singers doing it, but got to work with what we have. And let's check out the bridge now. I think we're okay. We might need to automate one or two lines, but let's listen. Sounding pretty good. I think we're done with the vocals. Now, the one last thing that you may or may not want to do, the whole mix is sounding good as it is. And in the next video, I'm going to A, B the different sections for you with and without EQ back to back so we can really hear a comparison side by side. But, and then after that, we're going to look at working on the stereo mix, some mastering EQ. But before that, one last thing that some people do, I have everything going to a master bus here before it hits the main output. And we could put what's known as an exciter on here. And I'm going to try it out. And it's it's kind of seductive because they sound great right out of the box. But you got to be careful not to use too much of it. Your ear gets used to it. And it can really hype the upper highs and upper mids and highs in a, a way that's flattering. But if you're not careful, it can be too much. So what this does is it sort of enhances the upper harmonics of wherever you have this set at. So I want to work with the high end here. Let's go really high, like around there and just a little bit of it. And let's listen to the bridge because we're gonna really hear it on this cymbal. I'm gonna play it a little before and then going into the bridge. And I wanna hear that we're enhancing and not, you know, making it just too strident.
I definitely hear it even at this very modest amount. I'll dial it up higher so you can really hear what it's doing. I'll exaggerate the effect, not in any way that I would really use it, but just so you can understand how it sort of enhances the harmonics of this. So if it's set at 84, it's enhancing at around 16, 8, etc. So you hear how it can be seductive because it adds that nice air on top, but a little goes a long way. Think less is more with this. I think I will leave it on. I'm going to, again, think about it for now, but I'm going to leave it for the moment, and I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use it in the final mix. Hold on, you hold on? So that's it for now. In the next video, I'm going to do some side-by-side A-B comparisons of the different sections with and without all the EQ.